Hey everyone, so I hope you all had a nice weekend. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't make any videos this weekend. I was really, really busy just doing some other things with normal life, but uh, I'm back, you know, on Monday here making a video for you. Um, so today's video is going to be on Baron, which I think is probably the best epic nuker uh, in the game. Now, she does have some competition with Nathalia, but because the meta, at least for Arena, is more uh, water-focused, uh, I think Baron is better than Nathalia. I don't use Nathalia at all, actually, for uh, Arena. But, um, yeah, we're going to be talking about Baron here today. So let's just go over her, her trait and the rest of her kit, and then we'll talk about her. So her trait says, at the start of the round, gains crit damage up for one turn. And it's a two-round cooldown. And then if she's ascended, she gets crit damage up and damage up for one turn. So this used to be speed up, uh, but they recently changed it. And uh, at first I was thinking this was going to be a nerf, but it's just different. Like, it's not better or worse. She hits much harder now, but uh, the fact that she's kind of slower uh, does make you change the way that she needs to be built. So the way that uh, I have her built right now is like uh, in Avarice set, but I'll talk about her build when, when we get there um, and why I think it kind of needs to be changed. Um, so that's her trait. Really good trait, you know, just increasing her stats, her damage for, for nothing, right? Uh, she then has this basic ability that deals 110% damage to two enemies and then grants attack up to this character for two turns. So pretty good basic, you know, just increasing her damage again. She then has this passive that says attacks will launch a bonus special ability strike if four or more enemies survive, dealing 90% damage to all enemies that scales with the number of enemies remaining and can only be triggered once per round. So the wording on this is actually kind of weird. Uh, it makes you think that if you kill somebody when there's four members on the team and then there's only three left, that this won't attack but it does as long as there were four members at the start of her attack um, she will do this special ability and this is why she's so good she has two aoe abilities in you know like one one attack it's really nuts um so then her ultimate ability deals 110% damage to all enemies that scales based on the number of enemies remaining and ignores 30% of defense for targets over 50% current health. So even though this says 110% damage, it seems like a low multiplier, um, but this scaling really increases this damage. I don't know what it is, but it is definitely not 110%. Uh, on top of that, you know, ignoring 30% of defense is so key nowadays in this game. Like, if it doesn't have any ignored defense on attacks, they it just feels like they do so much less damage. Uh, and most of the time, she's going to be the first or second person attacking in your team. So this is this is almost always going to apply. So she's just a raw damage dealer. She's squishy, but her, her whole goal is to be the first one to act or to get her attacks off before the enemy goes and just completely wipe the entire team, right? So these are the stats I have on her right now. This was an old build uh, based on her old ability trait, which was giving her speed. So she would go up to like 270 some speed. But now she's a bit slow for RTA. But the thing is, is this kind of build still works really well for normal arena. And I'll talk about that a little bit. So she just has really high attack, really high crit damage, and decent speed, which isn't super important for normal arena. Because most of the time you're going to be jumping into her with Halia, which is where I'll showcase most of this stuff. Um... But for RTA, she needs to be faster. In all honesty, and I'll show you here in a second, uh, I would change her build if I were to use her more uh, reliably in RTA. But I don't use her as much nowadays because I've switched up my strategy a little bit. Um, so here is the gear. 
She's an Averson Speed, like I said, so she has some really, really nice pieces on her. She has probably my best Averse gear on in the game, so all the right substats here, attack, crit rate, crit damage, speed, a nice helmet here. It could be better, obviously, but it's still okay. Um, so crit damage, attack percentage, speed, crit rate, uh, crit damage, attack percentage, crit damage with attack percentage and crit rate. This, this, uh, ring could also be upgraded and then uh, attack percentage speed and crit damage so this one could also be a bit of an upgrade too but still some decent gear so what i was saying was this kind of works for normal arena right now but if i were to run her in rta i'd probably do something like this just give her more speed um, with a little less attack and crit damage just so she is going first um, because if she doesn't get to attack then you know, <laughs> it's worthless anyway. So uh, even with these stats, she's still too slow in RTA, which is pretty nuts, you know, having 281 speed on a nuker. Being, uh, still being kind of slow is, is pretty insane. Just shows how crazy RTA has gotten. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the build I have on her. Um, you know, from a glyph perspective, she does get a lot of speed, which is nice, and a nice amount of crit rate. Uh, I do have her uh, fully booked out. I think she's 100% worth it. She gets the crit damage uh, physique as well as uh, additional crit rate here. And then the damage on her uh, abilities is really important as well. Um, another thing to mention is she's extremely good in Void Tower Hard. Um, just like I use her all the time over a lot of my other heroes and I run her in this build and you can even have her slower in Void Tower Hard. The thing is, is if you don't have her booked, she's still viable in a uh, Rebel or Stun set because she does get those multiple attacks um, to get stuns. So that's another way to run her in, you know, a PvE setting. But from a uh, arena setting, you definitely want to maximize damage. So right now, I'll tell you, like I'll show you what I usually end up running here. So uh, ideally, you know, like a team like this is really tanky. You know, they have a Holy Armor Virgil. They have a Divine Yolanda. Um, and then they have this Evelyn First Dawn that's giving them attack and defense boosts. But a team that I'll bring in, you know, for something like this is, you know, just, uh, I guess, something along these lines, right? So what we're doing is we're going to use Halia to put the defense down up on this team, and then we'll jump right into Baron, and she's going to nuke down this team as much as possible, which is going to be very likely that she one-shots almost everybody but Light Nick, and then uh, Ashlyn's going to stun the rest. But... Like I said, this is a tanky team, so who knows, but my Baron is strong. I think it's going to depend on what their resistance is on, you know, resisting this. Uh, yeah, okay, so it all goes up here. She should be able to kill Holy Armor Virgil. And this Divine Yolanda, um, in her trait, she can't take more than 65% damage from one attack. But the thing is, is Baron has those double abilities, Right, if there's four or more enemies after her first attack, she does that bonus attack um, with her uh, passive. So w what I tend to do is I just jump into Baron. And remember what I was saying here, her passive, it says it, it attacks with a bonus special ability. So what's going to happen is we're going to ignore 30% of their defense because they're all above 50% health, right? And then after that, she's going to launch a bonus attack. So her ultimate can't kill Yolanda straight out, but because it's two separate attacks, the ultimate is going to deal probably 65% of the damage, and then the passive ability is going to kill her if we have enough damage. But like I said, she does have some decent boosts here from Evelyn first on. So let's see. So here's the ultimate, right? This is the first attack. And then the second attack. So almost... Almost killed the Divine Yolanda, took out the Holy Armor Virgil and the Evelyn First on. Um, but now we're just going to stun the Dark Nick, and then 
the rest of the damage from Ashland should kill the Divine Yolanda. So there you go. Like teams like this, this is what I always do. I always just bring in the stun from Ashland, and then I just jump into Baron to do all the damage, and then we just have all this cleanup from the rest of our heroes. So like Baron with Halia is just such a strong combo. Um, and then having other fast like control champions like Ashlyn is what I use for most hard teams. This team is another one that I'd like to bring this in for, but they do have a uh, Dark Dragon S Rena. So that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, we can try this uh, and we'll see what happens here. Uh, the thing is, is whenever Halia gives the uh, bonus turn here, she will counterattack and possibly put up silence, which isn't an issue because I do want to showcase that Baron can be good even without um, even without her ultimate. Like if she has some kind of control effect, but if she stuns her, then we'll just have to come back in. So here, you know, we do the same thing. And Baron's also good against people like Dark Nick because she'll get, you know, that second attack and already take down one of his stacks for his Unvincible. So let's see what happens here. So here's the counterattack. Okay, so she did put up the silence, and she did get a stun on Ashlyn, which could end up making us lose, you know, from a Dark Nick. But I'll show you how hard Baron hits just on that passive, even without her ultimate, right? So we're going to attack, like, uh, Divine Yolanda here, and then we'll see the second attack from the passive come into play, and it's still going to do decent damage, even though uh, Dark Dragon S. Rena removed, you know, her damage uh, buffs. So, took down, see? <laughs> see how strong that is? <laughs> so even though she was silenced and all that stuff, she just does massive damage. Um you know, to, to my opponents. So yeah, pr pretty crazy stuff. Um, and it, it does seem like, uh, this person stopped trying. Maybe those heroes weren't geared or something, but Baron can do that even against geared heroes. Um, just based on how hard that, uh, dark neck hit, I'm pretty sure that maybe, maybe this person has stopped trying. So that is definitely the main, uh, main purpose of of Baron is to just jump in and then do those nukes, right? And she can even take down like Nero's because she ignores 30% uh, defense, right? So, you know, we're just going to see another example. It, it's really this simple, you know, like there's, there's nothing to her other than the fact that she does raw damage and She's much more effective whenever there are four people on the team because if your opponent doesn't have four people alive whenever she attacks, she won't do this passive, which is where a lot of her damage comes from. So here she's going to go, and she's going to do, what was that, 75% to Nero, really tanky Nero. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. So almost, almost took him out. And then we're just cleaning up here. So I will show you why it's important, um, you know, to kind of jump into Baron. Because the issue is, is let's say you kill someone um, and then Baron goes. She does not do that second attack. So I think there was a Methasia team here. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's, a, mem that's a member of my guild. Um... Yeah, like let's do let's do this team. Okay. So here, you know, let's say I wanted to try and kill this dark hassle, right? And I don't jump into Baron. What's gonna end up happening is whenever Baron goes, she's just gonna do so much less damage uh, because she doesn't have that second attack. 
So we'll go in and we'll do this. We'll try and take out this dark hassle, tanky boy. Um, so I'm going to do something that I normally wouldn't do. Let's see if this Alicia kills me. No, okay. Yeah, so here we're just going to kill the dark hassle. Because I want to show you... Oh, jeez, okay. I didn't kill the dark hassle, but... Um, here, because there's only three people left... Uh, Baron will not do this second attack with her passive. If she, uh, dang it, <laughs> she, <laughs> she, uh, crit against the Alicia. I didn't think she was going to kill her. One second. I'll find you a better example. Uh, here. Yeah, this will be a good one. Uh, so we'll bring in, you know, Jabez. We'll bring in Jabez to ca uh, counter against the Shark Soul Andre, and then I'll show you that a Baron, if these heroes are geared well enough, um, Baron won't be able to one-shot like a Holy Armor Virgil or uh, a Halia. Okay. So that goes, and then uh, Jabez counters. And then we'll uh, stun the Orion. Okay. Now here, if this Holy Armor Virgil is built well enough, this should not kill him. But it does, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess we're just showing how strong Baron is. She basically kills everything, even if she doesn't get a bonus attack. You really want to prioritize her being your your main nuker, though, because she can one-shot almost anything if she, again, gets that second attack. Uh, and as you're seeing here, she's almost one-shotting things even with her first attack. Um, but great investment. I would say, other than Nathalia, just because of dungeon purposes, that Baron is like next up on your list to book, for sure. She helps you with uh, Void Tower... Um, hard same thing with natalia so having these two heroes booked not only are going to get you through dungeons and void tower hard together they'll also scale well with arena so that's just a little uh little showcase on baron why she's you know top tier nuker she's better than most legendaries to be honest she's probably the best aoe nuker in the game right now uh from red green and blue heroes like i think she's the best even out of all legendaries in red green and blue so goes to show that there are some really really usable epics in this game uh but that's all i got for you guys today thanks for watching i'll catch you later